Tears idle tears by Alfred Lord Tennyson. Tears idle tears is a poem by Alfred Tennyson here. Uh, tears come into the poet's eyes while he is looking at the autumn hills and thinking of the past days that are no more. The happy past days, fresh as shining light and sad as the fading light, make him both happy and disheartened at the same time. Tears idle tears is a little lovely lyric that describes the longing of the poet for his bygone days, his past youth and his com past companionship. Mm, the a whole atmosphere and the whole human or uh, human affairs all these are only in the memories as they are no more the whole poem is a series of suggestive images that make it memorable the eternal truth past life does not come back again it's beautifully presented by Alfred Tennyson in this short lyric. Uh, the repeated phrase, the days that are no more, or this refrain contains the substance of the poem. The poet wishes to have them back. Who does not? Everyone. Everybody wants to have those days back, those friendships and those uh, all these activities back to the day. But there is no way that he can. This deep longing, this impossible wish makes the poet sadly present. And this poem is sadly pleasant poem uh, as a whole. Okay, welcome to my YouTube channel Bachelor and Master Yes, As you have heard, we have been talking about Tears Idle Tears by Alfred Lord Tennyson. In our today's discussion, there shall be introduction of the poem. Uh, there will be paraphrase, summary, discussion in Nepal as well. Finally, there will be critical analysis with uh, the discussion of different literary instruments used in the course of this poem's discussion or this poem's designing. Okay, I'm sure all of you will accompany me till the end of this video. If you are new to my channel, uh, please subscribe my channel. And if you think this video is worth watching, recommend your friend and fellows and let them know this channel is worth uh, visiting for the young learners, those who are interested in English language and literature for uh, different levels uh, from plus two to master level. Okay, uh, here let's get going. Alfred Tennyson and his lyric uh, in the slide, and this is the introduction of the poem as a glimpse. Poem Tears Idle Tears. Poet Alfred Lord Tennyson, published 1847, Eddie in the Princess. Form of the poem is lyric in blank verse with four five line stanzas. Genre is, of course, it is poetry, and uh, a sub genre is elegy here. This uh, form also takes our mind to the, the feeling that the poet has when he lost his beloved friend, Arthur Henry Hallam. This elegiac tone is reflected here, and this has elegy, elegiac notes in this poem, and this subgenre is elegy here. The form of poetry here is elegy here. Language used in the poem is simple and lucid. The style is personal, emotive, and poetic. And the tone is somber. Mood, the poem has nostalgic, melancholic, gloomy, and grievous mood. Subject of the poem is the passion of the past and the abiding in the transient. Transient means very short period of time and just uh, happening and vanishing. That's called transient. Theme, the fundamental theme of the poem is death and the uh, Grief, love, sadness, aging of the poet, and uh, accepting the death as the ultimate the truth, and there is regret, regret for those days that are no more. 
regret for those friends which are no longer with you. So those days, those beauty, all the those surroundings and those happenings, along with those friends that are no more with him. Literary tools used in the poem are so many. Literary tools are used, but uh, for metaphor, simile, imagery, symbol, and different. These are some of the literary tools. Okay. Uh, this is short introduction of the poem at a glance in this slide and I'm sure this slide will help you learn a lot of things to tackle or to discuss the poem uh, as a literary piece and very important piece of literature at our hand. Okay. Here is paraphrase. I'm crying and crying and I, I don't know why. The tears seem to come from a deep sadness which feels at the same time like it's something heavenly. This sadness begins in the heart before making its way to the eyes as I look at the happy sight of these autumn fields and think about the past. These tears are invigorating as the first sunbeam hitting the shell of a ship that carry our dead friends back from the underworld. But these tears are also as sad as the last sunbeam reflecting of the shell of another ship which carries everyone we love away over the horizon. It's so sad but also so invigorating to think about the past. Really, it's as sad as and, the, and strange as a dark summer morning when the first birds just have awake themselves begin singing their song to someone who is on their deathbed. Who can see the rising sunlight slowly filter through a window? It's so sad but also strange to think about the past. These tears are as rare and treasured as the memory of a dead lover's kisses and they are as sweet as the kisses pictured by a hopeless imagination. Hopeless because these imaginary, imaginary kisses are with someone already romantically tied to somebody else. These tears are as deep as love itself, especially first love and are thoroughly consumed with regret. Oh, it's like bringing the dead to life again to think about the past. Okay, after uh, telling you the paraphrase and it's time uh, to narrate or to discuss the summary here. The speaker is filled with tears of which she does not know the source. She thinks of the days that have passed friends who are gone and lost kisses and she is filled with sweet and poignant grief. In the desperate mood at the loss of her bygone days, the speaker is reminded of her past life when her eyes fall upon happy autumn fields. These tears come from divine despair and they, they pass through the core of human heart to get powered down. The poet is very imaginative when he hears the first beam, when he refers to the first beam on glittering soil or cell and uh, draws a beautiful comparison. She declares the past to have been dear, sweet, deep and wise. She is reminded of the past when she had an opportunity to absorb sad consequences of her ship and the passengers. Through the speaker's reminiscence, the poet presents the emotional turbulence in his mind after seeing the beautiful natural setting of Pinton Abbey. The speaker sings up the baseless and in Applicable tears that rise in her heart and pour forth from her eyes when she looks out on the field. The happy autumn fields and the days that are no more. The cell glittering by the sunlight at dawn seems to the speaker that it may bring her friend uh, from the curse of oblivion. In the dark summer dawns, the sweet song of the half awakened birds is not suiting to the speaker. It once gave the speaker satisfaction as her friend was with her. 
the death of his beloved friend has changed everything. It has left the seeker with the memories of the past in the sad heart. For her, the past was as deep as first love and as wild as the regret that usually follows this experience, the seeker concludes that the past is a death in life. Okay. So, we have talked about paraphrase and summary. Now, uh, let's uh, discuss the poem in Nepali. Rukia, Ashu Rukia. Roko, na gari ala. Oile dharna biala bako chho. Alfred Tennyson ko yu tears I will tears. Rukio, roko Ashu, roko. अंग्रेजी साहित्य को विक्टोरिया काल खंड का चर्चित कवि अल्फ्रेड टेनिसन द्वारा रचित को रोका आशु रोका ऐले नगर एक प्रख्यात गीतिकाव्य चतुष्पदी यो पंचस्पदी चार अनुच्छेद में रचित को यो कविता विगत का सोनिम दिन हरूरा एकदम असल मित्र हरू को समझना कर दे ये दिन फरक होने चाहना अभिव्यक्त करे कसम कवि ट यो कविता में बीते का दिन रस साथी और को उत्कृष्ट बनान था प्रत्येक पंचस्पदी और अपना कवि ले बीते का दिन और फरक वाला खोजी पनी और ये ती उपाय और दर्शन भाई को देखने से यो ती प्रचाहना जून असंभव था जैसे ले कवि लाई दुखांत रूप में आनंदी यो कविता ले दुखांत रूप में भाई पनी उड़ा आनंद दिन हरु को नजर लाऊं दा कभी का नए आशुले तल पलेंजन ती खुशी का दिन हरु बिहानी का किरण जस्ता मनोरम रास्ता उन लाय का सूर्य का किरण जस्ता देखी उदय का लाग दा लाग दा कभी लाई छेड़ बर में खुशी रह छेड़ बर में दुखी बनाए रोका आशु रोका ऐले नजर ये सिर्फ को संपूर्ण कविता में प्रेम भाई का � बीस पंक्ति में कोई टेनिसन ले कहाँ गए थी दिन हरु मने रद्दीगर का थी दिन हरु समझे पक्का नहीं बच्चा कहाँ गए थी साथी हरु कहाँ गए थी संगर रमाए का छेड़ हरु कहाँ गए प्रकृति का ये रम जम्मा घुले का दिन हरु अपनों बीते को बहिस को थी दिन हरु समझो दे ती छेड़ हरु समझो दे कब भाप उठाएगा � प्रयोग सत्य लाती सुंदर रूप में प्रस्तुत करने प्रयास करेगा सन कवि टेनिसन ने प्रत्येक कवितात्मक अनुच्छेद में का अंतिम हरफ में दूरी को बहिष्कृत को मेरा उदय ने घुमेरा डेड इज डेट आर नॉर्मल ये कविता को सार समित करते कवि इन्हें ती बीते का दिन और फिरता ले उन्हें चाहना करते हैं और क्यों करने चाहना � कौन हो प्रत्येक आदत वहीं सिले वह वृद्ध लेती बीते का दिन और समझो दे स्मृति में रमाऊं नहीं करते स्मृति का पाना पलटाऊं दे ती छेड़ हरू में रमाऊं नहीं करते मानसे आखिर फिरता ले उन्हें नशे के बजे कभी बस वह जोश बोस तो असम प्राय तीव्र चाहना ले कभी ताले किन नरु में भाई बनी मनोहर क कवि ले आशुर प्रभाव भी नहीं भाई बनी स्तर से मैं पूछे कि लोगों ने तीन वाले बीते का ती सुंदर दृश्य और सुंदर छेद और रति असल मित्र और फिरता ले उनसे अपने उनको ठहर सा ती साथी और जो चाहिए के पहले में जो ही ले पनी संगे जुड़ दे ती साथी और कहाँ गए आए ती रमजम का दिन और ती पागे का फाट और ती लटर फूल ती चरा ती बमरा सारा तो सारा संसार तो चीज में देखने इंद्रियों कौशल बोलता आशु निष्क्रिय भाई पनी तीन एरु देवी नैराश्य बाटा उपजिए का रहते से कारण ले नाटक की उड़ीसे करा गया था कभी तक उत्पत्ति कभी कुछ दिमाग का भाई को मसंदेह ना भाई को करा बक्ता को मन में भाई करा तेज को यो रूप में उन्होंने अलौकिक नई राशि आशु मोटू बाटा उपजी आँख में भरी जिनमें लकबी सुंदर निश्चयता को दृष्टि पान करते 
बिगड़ता ती प्रकृति संग रमा दिन ती साथी मोटू में भक्का नर्द कपी को आंखा में आंसू छलछल कगे रही कहीं बिराशुला पुराट लगे दिकदार लगने दिन बिगड़ता दिनतर्फ समझना कराने मात्र न भर जीवन में मृत्यु बोक दिन बट आज छुटकारा पा तिनी बीत दिन को स्मरण होने रहे आखिर कह गए ती दिन फिर तो लियान पाए हो तर जीवन में मृत्यु बोक् समझना हो मैसाल उमे आके क्रिटिकल एनालिशिस इन द पोम टेनिशन लैमेन्स फर द डेज दैट आर नो मोर इन द मुविंग मैनर द पोएट पुट्स अक्रॉस सडन पिक्चर्स विच हाईलाइट दिस इर्निंग फर द पास डेज द पोएट नोज दैट These tears are idle because they cannot bring back these vanished eyes, yet they well from some divine despair, and thus serve a dramatic purpose. There is no doubt in the speaker's mind about the origin of the poem in some divine despair. The tears rise in the heart as the speaker looks upon a scenic scene of beauty and tranquility. The poem thus tries to investigate. the specific qualities of a universal experience which is presented in a closely knit highly functional pattern of organization evincing a high degree of artistic discipline the poem is made up of four stanzas and each one of them ends with the days that are no more serving as a reference tears come to the poet's eyes when he looks at the happy fields of autumn and thinks of the days that are gone that have gone these days are so fresh and so sad they are as fresh as the first beam of light which shines on the sail of a boat that brings our friends from the underworld these days are as sad as the last beam of light which fall on these loved ones disappearing from our sight forever these days have been called as sad and as strange as the earliest stopping of boards in the dark summer dawns when dying ears and eyes of people find the windows gradually becoming dim for them forever these days of the past are as dear as the remembered kisses after death and are as sweet as those one fancied by hopeless imagination they are as deep as the first outburst of love and as well too they have been called dead in life dead in life because the content the continue to haunt the living in spite of their being dead and gone thus the poem is a masterly description of the days that have gone the word picture used here to convey the various aspects of the days of the past give us an insight into the sad and sensitive personality of the poet himself Here the idol tears is a part of larger poem called the princess published in 1847 Tennyson wrote the princess to discuss the relationship between the sexes and to provide an argument for women's rights in higher education however the work as a whole does not present a single instrument to tell a coherent story rather like so much of Tennyson's poetry it evokes complex emotions and moods through a mastery of language Here the idle tears a particularly evocative section is one of several interludes of song in the midst of the poem the first is as the first is as deep as the first love as it is wild with all the dark the poet visualizes death in life he is still alive but the memory of the past is haunting him frequently Alfred Lord Tennyson's tears are idle tears combined beauty with sadness in a way that causes a reader to feel empathy for the speaker. Tennyson's speaker is able to depict the sorrow of mourning and the devastation of lost years. He brings attention to what it means to age and become aware of the darker side of life. In particular, the speaker mourns over the days that are gone and will never return. He also feels sorrow for those who have lived and died before his time. By the time 
reader gets to the end of the poem, it will be clear that the speaker is narrating the piece from beyond the grave. In conclusion, Tennyson's tears, idle tears, bring attention to feeling uh, or intimately associated with aging such as regret, reminiscence, and despair. Tennyson is an outstanding Victorian poet of English literature. Throughout the entire Victorian period, he stood as the summit of poetry in England. He was also uh, the poet laureate of England after William Wordsworth. Tears, Idle Tears is an exquisite song by poet laureate. It was written uh, on a visit to Tintern Abbey when he writes. The woods were all alloying with autumn seem through the ruined windows. It is the sense that charms the past. The theme of the poem is the recalling of the vanished days or by bygone days, the days that are known. This remembrance has turned the poet's mood into a melancholic state. His heart is filled with longing for the past. This is a simple lyric in uh, first standard of five lines. The fifth line is a refrain which grows out of the thought of the stanza. Tears are the symbol uh, of the pathos and tragedy of life. Through different images, the poet has presented his present agony and longing for the lovely dear past which is gone. When he looks into the happy autumn fields, his eyes are filled with tears which come from the depths of despair. Those bygone days are still fresh in his memory and he is saddened or disheartened that they are finished. Those days were dear as remembered kisses after death and sweet as those of hopeless fancy pain on lips that are shrouded. The loss of happy youthful days ha has been death in life for the poet. The poem expresses this longing through uh, his you know, attempt and though in vain uh, for his happy past life. Okay. And this is all discussed now. Let's go with uh, literary devices used in the poem and why and what literary devices has uh, Tennyson used uh, in course of composing this poem and making it uh, quite appealing. A Tennyson's poem, Tears, Idle Tears, is full of literary devices. It makes the poet's idea appealing to the reader. The use of different literary instruments are exemplified as a metaphor here. Idle Tears, Red and... So this is men. Um, the poem uses different uh, literary instruments. Simile, a lot of similes here. Press as the first beam glittering on a cell. Sad as the last which reddens over one, sweet as those by hopeless fancy pain, deep as first love or love. Imagery, a lot of imagery used, a lot of images or series of images have been uh, used here in course of the composition. All the images are not uh, mentioned here, but uh, some images uh, worth mentioning are here as under. Dim glittering on a cell. Half awakened birds, slowly growing glimmering fire, kissing a deer after death, and deeply falling in love, etc. And uh, this poem also uses biblical allusion uh, when he talks about uh, his friends coming and going. There is underworld. So this underworld refers to Bible, and this is uh, this is ref refers. A reference from Bible and it is used here uh, to mean those friends who have gone to and the another world who have already died. Alliteration. So here repetition of consonant sound in a line of poetry. The first letter in a sound, in a word. So sad, so sound is repeated. So strange, another so sound. Tears, idle tears, saw sound is repeated in the title. Or it says, Depth of some divine despair. Da sound, da consonant is repeated. 
sad and strange as in dark summer dawns so in this line so and do are repeated so is repeated three times and do is repeated two times okay uh, and here fancy thing for sound is repeated assonance the repetition of vowel sound in line of words here uh, in there's rise and eyes i sound is repeated assonance dying eyes again i sound repeated so it's musicality it is you know musical notes can also be noticed when the poet is using um, alliteration assonance and these different restraint itself uh, yes the lyric do it is in blank verse the but uh, this um, alliteration assonance consonant uh, all these restraint all these create a kind of musicality so here uh, apostrophe uh, the poet is addressing that to invoke it to hear his lamentation restraint the poem every stanza every last line of the stanza contains this refrain the days that are mine symbol first dim glittering on a cell the last which radiance over one dark summer dawns glimmering square singing song dark summer lift kiss etc these are the symbols used to create a kind of effect okay uh, and that to support the theme to boost the theme or oxymoron here and it's like uh, paradox here two contrasting things come together divine death here death in life all these impossible things are contrasted here in oxymoron uh, happy autumn fields here is personification also happy autumn fields autumn fields are presented as happy and only human beings can be happy but how can autumn fields so this is uh, the human attribute is given to autumn fields and the radiance also uh, the this is also personification and death is personified in the last line here paradox and this happy autumn fields happy autumn fields how uh, autumn fields can be happy dark summer dawns dark and dawn death in life all these are paradox okay so i'm sure you got the points if you have any queries you can put your ideas in my comment box uh, i shall be back with another important discussion uh, till then have a nice time